walking through the garden in the early evening, listening to the wind move softly through the trees, gives a sense of peace. There's almost a spiritual relationship on top of that mountain with the land. And you can feel it when you're there. This place speaks, and on so many different levels. Overwhelming natural beauty, thoughtful design, and a noble purpose. But Southern Highlands Reserve is more than that. There aren't many wild places left in the world, and it's important that we protect and preserve them for they have much to teach us. I always felt a, a deep spiritual connection to the outdoors. When we discovered Toxaway Mountain, I really immediately felt drawn to this place. Our children were young. They lived in the big city and they didn't know about snakes and turtles and rabbits and deer and all kinds of things, perhaps suffering from nature deficit disorder. And we were determined to bring them into the woods to experience nature as Betty and I did growing up individually. She gathering wildflowers in the Tennessee woods, me hiking in the mountains of North Carolina and North Georgia. I'd say I'm more of an editor of the garden. I uh, like to take things out that don't seem to fit like the weeds. And uh, I think that's why I, when I think of a garden, I think of something that can be totally maintained perfectly. And it, um, this is absolutely not something you can ever have total control over. Robert likes to laugh and because I love to pick weeds. And he said, well, I'm going to make you happy for the rest of your life because there'll be plenty of weeds to pick. And the first thing that we realized was that we had a really special piece of property, 120 acres sitting along the Eastern Continental Divide. And the boundary line between Panther Town Wilderness Area, which is a 7,000 acre wilderness area, that's been referred to as the Yosemite of the East. And the more that I studied about this area, and the more I realized that we had more plant diversity here than anywhere else in the world, the more I began to realize what a special piece of property this was. So the challenge wasn't trying to make something. The challenge was trying to protect what was here and to use the analogy of polishing the diamond as opposed to simply reinvent something. After our house was complete in the early 1990s, I began exploring all of the land that was between our home and Panther Town Wilderness area. My uncle, Frank Armstrong, would come up and we would attempt to create paths through the woods. Well, in the early days, we tried to build trails, but it was just our, uh, uh, our amateurish attempt. Uh, I remember being on the mountain with Robert trying to build a trail in the middle of the winter and it's snowing we just had the best time uh, trying to do that. And they'd come out here and they'd cut trees and make paths and uh, they just had the best time ever. But Robert has been hands-on every step of the way. I said to Frank one day, I really think that we ought to do something to protect this land. The developer has come to me and offered me a chance to buy the 60 acre piece across the power line on which they want to put 22 houses. And what Frank and I discovered is that the only way the developer could access the land was through a lot that they had sold me across the road six months earlier. And the Toxaway company really couldn't use it. And Frank, who was also my attorney, 
help me set up the conservation easement where ultimately we conveyed nearly 120 acres to North American Land Trust to forever hold in perpetuity and to protect this development and to prevent 22 houses from being built on top of Toxaway Mountain. I have a deep and abiding belief in a higher power. And the older I get, the more emotional I get about such things. But uh, when I first came here, that power was so strong. And, and I felt so um, grateful to be invited here uh, and, and, and to be with folks here that shared that understanding. When I first met Gary, I sensed not only the, the serendipity that he happened to be available for the weekend that we wanted him to come and visit us, but I saw not only the previous work he had done, I just saw how he seemed to be engaged as soon as he came here. The importance in the work that I do, not just bonding with the place, but bonding with the people that are caring for that place. And I know that we all shared that deep spiritual sort of feeling uh, about the woods. And so this was a place when I first came here where that kind of that kind of way of being was totally okay. It was encouraged. I'm just looking at these verticals of trees here and, and how close together and beautiful that is, these columns. For, for native plant enthusiasts, their little patch of galax is their prize, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And to see here nature providing this enormous sweep of the stuff. And, and we're not walking by it and looking at it, we're walking through, through it. it. Right? Yeah. And you don't get that experience. Mm -hmm. When I talk about abstraction, mm -hmm. that's, Robert, that's exactly what I'm saying. You know, that, that you're, you're having a relationship with a place, you got to know it a little bit, and then you made some decisions about how to really reveal its like essential quality, right? So I'll give some highfalutin sort of words to what you just said, but, but that's abstraction. You created a work of sculpture uh, in, this, in this spot. Well, this is the kind of rattlesnake. We are showing a side of conservation and a side of management and a side of design that isn't fulfilled in the public realm. State botanical gardens, the Forest Service, all of these larger agencies, we're a piece of the puzzle. It takes the private and the public to put it together. The Conservancy is very involved in trying to promote a new network of people interested in spruce and spruce restoration in the Southern Appalachians. We were looking for expertise on growing red spruce from seed for restoring red spruce in the range of the Carolina Northern Flying Squirrel and other high elevation forests for the benefit of many species. And Southern Highlands Reserve knows how to grow red spruce trees and they, they look so good that I would like to continue growing them here in as high a capacity as we can. And for me, Southern Highlands Reserve was not just a story about plants and gardens, it was a story about the people, the artisans who helped shape the garden. Jack Owen was the quintessential mountain man. His family had been in these hills for 200 years. But he was one of the smartest people that I ever met and I developed a deep friendship with him. Jack could move 40 to 50,000 pound rock and place them with an artist's touch. He was my friend and he spent eight years hauling rock up Toxaway Mountain and placing them artistically. When people visit Southern Highlands Reserve, one of the most frequently commented things is they cannot believe that all of these rocks were brought on top of this mountain. His mind was always clicking on what something could do. Most time boulders are used for retaining walls. But when he was in the woods working rock out, he was looking at a boulder at what it could do or what it could be, you know. He was always on the edge of what it could do more than just being a rock holding dirt. And what a character, an old mountain man. And he knew, had his way with rocks. He had a big crane on a truck and he created all the rock work around, which is I mean, it's just outstanding, you don't see anything like it. It looks like it's been here forever.
It was an opportunity to work in a gorgeous place and the mantra that we had from early on, if not the first visit, the first couple of visits was, you've been given this wonderful gift and a place to work and a wonderful opportunity to, if anything, improve it. Shortly after Kelly interned at Southern Highlands Reserve, she introduced me to her mentor, Dean Dan Nadanichek, who's the Dean of the College of Environment Design at the University of Georgia. And Dan came to visit Southern Highlands Reserve and with his wife, Jeannie, spent the weekend with us and fell in love with this place just as Kelly and I did. So in talking to Robert out uh, on their back patio, he discussed the fact that he had started this and, and talked about his interest in horticulture and plants. And I was immediately taken by the fact that someone who had obviously done so well in business was willing to give so much back uh, with, uh, with an enterprise such as the Southern Highland Reserve. Dan has also been a kindred spirit in the sense of not only his love of this place, but the idea of how we can connect to nature through gardens and through the research that he's done, through the books that he's written to understand how folks have really been able to create magical places that really allow our soul to be nourished by the great outdoors. The work that they're doing at the Southern Highland Reserve is very important. It matters because the world is changing so quickly, not only due to climate change and other environmental uh, considerations, but also uh, social issues and demographic shifts. Uh, this is, a, in a way, a small island in a very large world, and the information that can be developed here, discussed, and then uh, disseminated in some way is going to be useful around the world as these various uh, environments change and change rapidly. I think that it's so important for people to be in nature that has been undisturbed by man. There's totally different vibration and feeling at, that you get from an area that, that's undisturbed by man. And it's restorative and refreshing. I think just seeing their love for being up here, um, more so than anything they said, um, really solidified how, what an amazing place this is. I mean, there's nowhere else in the world where you can find um, beauty like this. And we are so blessed that it's right across the street from where I grew up. Um, so horticulture um, and the outdoors have really been um, a central theme of my youth uh, in my life today. I still get such pleasure out of coming back up here, especially at a time like this, late spring, when the new leaves are out and everything is so fresh. It gives me great satisfaction and helps keep me calm. The serenity of it is really rejuvenating. For so long, I was focused on thinking, this will be so great when you know my kids can come here, the, when the grandkids come here. But then I realized, you know, I feel that way, and I'm not a kid. Um, I think that it's so important for other people to have the opportunity to come here and experience that. This place has shaped me and made me the person that I am, and I can't imagine not having had that experience. It really is a unique piece of ground, and I've traveled lots of places all over the world, but I don't know that I've found any place as beautiful as Western North Carolina. This high elevation island in the sky, if you will, provides a quiet respite for the tranquility that we're all seeking deep inside. 
That to me is one of the most magical things about Southern Highlands Reserve.